So for the paired sample state test, <coughs> note that we have the same units twice. So that's the big difference. And we don't have two groups, but we have the same units twice. And in this example, note that the post-test scores are actually the scores of group two from the independent sample state test. But here, this as an example, and that where you can see what the difference really is. Because the difference between independent paired sample t test is really this term here, which includes the correlation. The correlation is the relationship between the pre and post test. And note, if the correlation is zero, which would mean that there is no relationship, this whole term here becomes zero, right? Two times zero is zero, and then as soon as you have a zero in, a, in a, this term, the whole term goes to zero. So all this minus zero is the same, so you can basically get rid of it. Um, here I go into the details, right? We calculate how we can calculate the standard deviation. Same thing for this term here. We can do this a little bit quicker. We can say, okay, the mean, calculate the mean for score one. Pretest average, then we could say calculate the mean for post test average, and then we could also use the Excel formula, calculate the standard deviation for this group one, and calculate the standard deviation for this group two. So that would be the fast way. This here would be the long way. And then also here you see a little comparison between the different Excel formulas. And you see standard dev dot s is the standard deviation for sample. If you only use standard div, you also get the standard deviation for sample. However, if you do standard deviation dot p, then you get the population formula, which actually is the one that takes the sum of squared deviations divided by n, not n minus one, or the square root of the sum of the Right, and that makes sense because if we have the population, we have everybody, so we don't need to infer from a sample of the population. However, that's exactly why we divide by n minus 1 for the sample formula because we're trying to infer from the sample to the population, and we want to give ourselves a little bit of a buffer. You note how the sample formula is a bit higher on the standard deviation than the population formula. Again, this is a buffer for our estimate. Now we have all the, or now one more term that we need is this correlation, right? This R12. And you can see we use the formula corel and we use the array 1 and array 2. So corel looks at the blue values and correlates them with the green values and then we get a value of 0 0.199. The correlation is a measure of association between two variables and it can go from minus 1 to plus 1. Minus 1 is a very strong negative correlation, plus 1 is a very strong positive correlation and if you have 0 you have no correlation. So here we have a small correlation and we put, put that into our equation. So the difference in mean here, that will be the top term. And then the bottom term is here. So it's the square root of the squared standard deviation divided by n plus the squared standard deviation of the post test divided by n minus two times the correlation times the standard deviation of the pretest, then the standard deviation of the post test divided by 10. And then the t, calc, t value is the top term here divided by the bottom term. Now we can calculate a the, the probability t value. We can use this formula here from Excel which gives us the p 
p-value, but not the t-value. And also here you can decide which are the two arrays, how many tails you want to test, one or two, and then the type. One is the paired samples t-test, and two is the independent samples t-test. And then here you can see on the results, if we use the 5% significance level, we wonder is our p-value bigger than 0 0.05, then we retain the null, or is it smaller than 0 0.05, then we reject the null. So if you do a one-tailed, you reject the null hypothesis, you say there is a difference between pre and post test, and if you had a two-tailed test, then we would say we retain the null, just barely, but that's the way the rules are, if it's 0 0.05, or lower, then we reject the null. If it's above 0 0.05, we retain the null. Then you have a way to do this in the in the uh, real statistics. You, you can't see this, but it should be on the very top right of your menu. Data analysis, you can download this from the link I indicated. T-test, okay. I'm gonna say put this plug this in in cell a66 so it's below the existing cell here we say compare uh, here you enter the two arrays array for the pretest array for the post test you choose the two paired samples uh, you deselect column headings and then you're good if you hit ok you should get the table that looks like this, and there again you see the mean for the pretest, mean for the post test, the difference between the two, and then the p value one tailed, p value two tailed. You also get the t criticals, so it depends which method you prefer.